Hello, John Harrison here. Uh, just thought I'd quickly introduce myself um, because in the films that follow, you won't see me, you'll just see the work I'm doing, the pen I'm using, the paper. Um, it's great to meet you all, even though it's virtual, but in these strange times, this is actually all we, we can do. So um, we have to make the best of a really strange situation. I was delighted to be invited to do this. Um, it's my take on line and wash, which isn't the traditional uh, way of doing things, but it seems to work for what well, it works for me and hopefully quite a few people. So um, hope you enjoy it. So there you go. I'll just finish this in my rather appropriately named mug and we'll get started. Hope you enjoy it. Hi again everybody, um, here we are back on the lane at Little Stainpeth, here's the line drawing, all done. So now this stage is going to be adding some washes. Um, it's not going to end up as a, a fully realised, accurate representation of all the shades and colours and hues um, in the reference picture. But uh, let's get started really quickly. Um, usually when I do this, the first wash I put down is the sky. And for this, um, I always default. I always go start with cobalt blue um, for a sky. And I hope you can see what I'm trying to do is to let the characteristics of this lovely paper with a rough finish um, break up the wash. Again, I'll, we'll, we'll go back to the reference picture in a second. Well, look, here's a smaller print of it. Look, that sky is almost flat and screen print. It must have been a fantastic day when it was taken. Um, and in, in the early days of when I got back into artwork and painting and watercolour, I used to try like mad to get the sky, my sky wash as flat and as even as that look, um, more of a graphic design thing that I wanted a flat screen printed wash like the old travel posters. Um, but then I quickly realized that I'm, I'm, I'm actually using this lovely rough paper. I'll just tilt the border slightly. You probably see the, the rough texture on it there. And I love it for, for what happens here. Look, these things. It took me a while to learn. In my early days, I would have gone back in and tried to flatten that out. Well, you'll never do it working wet on a dry um, background as I do. You, if, if you want to do more traditional skies in watercolour, um, you need to wet the paper first and work traditionally. And as I keep saying, um, I'm not a traditional watercolourist. I just do a drawing and then add some colour to it. Now. That hill line up there, I want to put some nice purpley um, hills on. So what I'm going to do now, just picked up a brush I've noticed with a, a rogue hair, uh, but I'm not going to waste this paint that's on. So what I'll do is get this on there and then quickly put that brush down. Go back to this one. And... carry on putting the um, the light lightest green wash um, and again the whole focus of this drawing the scene I took and what I had in mind when I when I chose this viewpoint and the uh, and the composition was that I want everything to focus on this lovely group of buildings and in particular, this building in the middle, look, I'll show you on the photograph. That's Knight Stainforth Hall. Uh, and I want that to stay white, which is fantastic because it is white. Um, so what I'm going to do is to I've put a wash and it's a mixture of um, sap green, cadmium yellow, bit of hooker's green. Uh, and this darker green that I'm putting on. Um, so I want to start to build up the, 
the contrast. This darker green is a Daniel Smith colour called Undersea Green. Um, there will be a list of, of, of colours uh, available at the end of the three part series. Um, and I'll list all the colours I've used. Sorry, there's one thing I actually forgot to mention um, that I like to do. I've started, I do it on a demo. And I've started it here. Um, this, this margin down here, what I like to do is to use that margin to make a note of, um, of the colours I've used. Now that one's a bit, it's a bit strong. That's cobalt, so let's take some of it up. And there's the rogue hair look. I'll get rid of that. There you go. So it's kind of a swatch on the side of the. And when I finished, I'll well, I'll tell you what. Look, I'll write this on now to remind myself that that's cobalt blue. And then the next one is going to be the green that I've um, that I've used mixed, and I'll put this here. That's the lighter green. Um, so let's get started with the, carry on with the, the dark green here, this, um, because I really want to frame these buildings in there. And while I'm on this kind of colour, I'm going to get some quinacridone gold and start to drop different colours in, particularly up here, because I want to introduce a different look in, and we'll put some down here. This is a fantastic colour, quinacridone gold, Daniel Smith, fantastic. So let's, let's put that there, just so you get, and I'm dropping in, almost neat pigment there, I just want to, without getting into too much detail at the top, I actually want to, um, and here's another one. This is a kind of a darker one. I want to, oh, let's, let's drop it in there. This is a different shade. This is, this is actually quinacridone sienna. And it just lends a nice, there you go. Let's put that there, that's a lovely colour. Um, and what I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of staying away from that because I want to preserve that lovely line there and I, I'll put some, and I also don't want this to bleed into the hills in the background. Um, so let's just drop some tiny bits of that sienna up the top. There you go, and see if they don't, um, there you go. They'll just brighten it all up. Um, again, a purist would might say, oh, look, there's none of that in the, um, in the reference photograph. And my response to that would be, yes, but this is, uh, this is my, my take on on the scene um, and it's my interpretation I'm using the reference photograph just as a jumping off point really um, sorry I, all this mixing going on off camera um, this is the kind of a grass verge that's leading your eye in we'll put some more more greenery in there and we'll just leave that there and some there's a grass verge here although the majority of this grass verge will disappear under the second stage sorry the third stage this is the second stage yeah um, and it'll disappear under the the shadow color now Let's get some green in here because it needs to kind of frame, frame that, 
that lovely white building and there is a hint of a continuing grass verge there and then over here this is a it's a field over this wall and i think there's a, a bit of a field or it might be even be a lawn behind the house so let's do that um and then i'm deliberately leaving this until i can get get up there with that with some paint um this has all kind of gone into a it's just bled nicely in so let's drop some darker color in to see if we can't get any variation going on there um this is a much smaller brush than i usually use this is a, a sea white sable uh, size six i think it actually works really well with um with detail usually i prefer to use a a much darker sorry a much larger brush for for this kind of work um let's put some let's put some um just some variation and texture in on all these on this bit of the um of the greenery right so that's the majority of that done in um this is the kind of thing i really like where i not tempted to blend that in i want to leave that in it's a lovely a lovely feature so let's get some i'm going to start the hills with at the very top this is um ultramarine violet for the top so let's get that in fairly wet just along the along the horizon again artistic license these colors don't exist up there but they do in my imagination and before that dries let's pick up some some green and start to blend in and this is kind of a, a green mix but it's much paler i've put a lot more water into it to tone it down um let's put some of this in a bit more there and some this is I've just picked up a bit of this quinacridone sienna and gold that was in the, the palette and I just want to get these in. I don't want any detail in the back, in the background. I just want it like a suggestion of the hills. Um, let's put some, put some violet over there. And again, and you see, I've got a hard line over this edge, um, so I don't know what to do with that. But I'll um, I'll make a decision on that before before we get to the end. And then we need a bit more green because I'm going to bring this green down here um, just to frame the, the building. Again, I'm I'm actively looking for these broken edges don't want really don't want that hard line um, so what I might do before we get to stage three part three of this what I might do with that is to um, just work some some moisture into it and um, see if we can't spread it out because uh, I must admit I was more focusing on that but already you see I think this is that's really nicely focusing um, focusing the, the, the viewer's eye on that uh, on this building now 
what I need to do now, uh, and I'll make a note here. Look, this is this is um, some Payne's Grey. Get some Payne's Grey with a, a bit of cobalt blue in. And the reason I'm mixing that colour is what I'm going to do is to um, use this on the on the roofs of the buildings just to give a nice contrast between um, nice contrast to the, the greenery and that lovely natural colour and I'm just going to because the roof of this yes this is kind of it is slate I'm, I'm, I'm taking liberties with the actual colours because I know the the actual colours on the reference photographs aren't strictly this colour, but I like the the cool. And then this this building that's I think it's probably a barn at the I can't remember at there. And there's another roof there. Okay. Oh, and this has come out there. We'll do that in in. Uh, yeah, we'll do that in. In that colour as well, and then quickly, um, I want a, a, I want a colour, a, a difference in the colour of the stonework. And again, look the reference picture. This is all fairly grey and dull. So I'm, again, I'm going to use my artistic license, and I'm mixing um, a colour here that's yellow ochre that's got the tiniest bit of Payne's grey just to kill the yellowness and I'm going to use this where am I going to use it? I'm going to use this on this gable end staying well away from that white building um, I'm go also going to use it down here look to kill that white because and the chimney stacks have got this colour in. Um, there we go. And the these faces of, of this building will disappear under shadow, but um, I want to get some colour underneath before I put the shadow on. And I've made a decision probably um, a couple of minutes ago that I'm going to end the colour. See where this the edge of this wall is that needs more line work on it. I'll, I'll add some more line work. And this building, this main building, this big barn, that's going to be um, left uh, just depicted in in line work. So again, I'll put some more line work on there um, before stage three. And all of this, this wall here, again, will disappear in. This is a, a continuation of the wall. This is all going to disappear under the shadow colour. But if you don't put a colour underneath your shadow colour, um, you'll see when I, I'll demonstrate it, uh, the shadow colour just on, on paper can look a little flat um, and cold and I need this warmth underneath there so again some of this because that's a similar wall that's going along there slightly different look a bit more yellow ochre just to get some variation in there's some light um, And that's going in there. And then I think what I'll do is to uh, just let's tie a colour here in with that colour there, which is the quinacridone gold again. Um, and I'm just going to pull it round. Where are we? There you go. Just put some here. That's a little strong. So what I shall do. Let's just kill it there and do this. Um, I 
just want to get some variation on there. I, I, I don't really want just like flat, just flat areas of paint. There's, um, again, I've kind of decided with this lane, I don't know, I don't know whether to, I'll make, I'll make the decision, the final decision before, no, I think I'm going to do it now. Um, the choice is, do we, do we leave that lane unpainted? And the answer is no. So what, I'll just do this look. And that's a mixture of the, the, um, this color I've mixed. And so by definition, what we need to do is to kill this white and bring this in behind this gate and try and get the color in between there. And now while this is wet, let's just see if we can't get some See, all of this will be, all of this will be a bit more resolved because, um, right, that's the end of of stage two, where I've put colour around. Um, I'm going to put some more line work on here, a bit more line work on all of this when this is all dry, and then and stage three we'll see that, and stage three we'll also see the addition of the uh, the lovely shadows, which will all really bring the the whole thing to life. So, there you go. As they used to say on the telly in the old days, end of part two. See you again soon.